Every team, every topic, everywhere, this is Believe. Hello, everyone in podcast listening land. I'm Karen Devaney. And I'm Ann Barner. And, and we're, we're sisters. sisters. Welcome to Sugarcoated Murder, where we'll discuss... And probably inappropriately laugh about and comment on... Yep, one of our favorite subjects, murder. murder. Oh, and we love to bake. And why not combine our two favorite subjects? Baking and killers. And Devaney. Hey, Ann Barner. What's going on? Not much. I'm just in the kitchen. I'm in your kitchen, which I really enjoy being in. What you doing in my kitchen? Today I'm making something that I lovingly call Christmas crack. Yum. But it's actually called saltine toffee cookies. Oh. But it's Christmas crack to me. So it's pretty easy. It is four ounces of saltine crackers, a cup of butter, a cup of dark brown sugar, two cups of chocolate chips, and a quarter or three quarters of a cup of chopped pecans. I like to double the recipe because I never get enough of the stuff and I do hand it out a lot at Christmas. Really? Uh, you hand it out uh, at Christmas. Uh, <laughs> Who do you hand it out to? Because I, I don't recall ever getting it well, at my house. Okay, so I don't hand it out. I, that was the wrong term. I, I tend to give it. Because right now I'm thinking about that episode of Friends where Monica's uh-huh. in her kitchen and she's making all the candy mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. gives it to the neighbors, handing it out. Mm-hmm. But I don't, I don't think that I ever got any. Well, I think that's because. I never gave you any. Really? <laughs> and why is that, Karen Devaney? Well, because I usually give it out at work. But it sounds like you're eating it, too. You're eating it because you're talking about how you enjoy mm-hmm. it to eat. Actually, I just I put some chocolate chips in my mouth. Okay. So, here's the thing. Okay. Do better. So, <laughs> okay. So, like I said, today I'm making Christmas crack. <laughs> And I might give my sister a taste. Okay. How's that? (laughs) So anyway, this is really easy to do. So I'm going to be doing this while you're talking. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to line my cookie sheet with my saltine crackers in a single layer. Now, do you put parchment paper down? You don't put parchment paper down. You spray the hell out of your pan with, with spray. Right. And... It doesn't say anything in this recipe about how to prepare the pan. Right. But I'm going to tell you that you need to have a generous amount of spray because this is very sticky and it will stick to your pan. And okay. it's a pan in the ass to get off of there. If right. You don't give it a good. You can either, you can even take like some real butter. Butter. And just like slather it on top of that pan. Oh, yeah. There you, now you're talking. Yes. So, you're going to put your cookie sheet, your, yeah, you know. You're going to put your crackers on your cookie sheet, and then while you're talking, I'm going to melt my um, sugar and butter, brown sugar and butter, and I'm going to bring it to a bowl for third for three minutes, and then I'm going to pour it over top of over those top of those crackers. Lord have mercy! Yeah, it's so good. Woo, 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 woo! All right. All so right. While I'm doing that, you get to get you get to bacon. Okay. And I'll tell you a little story. Okay. A little, a little story. All okay. right. This is the story of Sarah Lynn Colucci, and she's a um, she's a local girl here in Charleston, um, and she's there's quite a story behind Sarah Colucci. Okay, she was bubbly and full of life and beautiful. Um, her friends said she was loving, always put together, and could sometimes be quick tempered. Oh no. If that's what I would want my friends to remember about me. But I'm pretty sure that's what my friends say about me. <laughs> they might. <laughs> so, it's okay. I so, get it. Sarah married her first husband um, in the 90s. But that marriage didn't last very long. It was actually less than a year. Been there. Done that. <laughs> um, she remarried an old high school sweetheart. Um, and um, they started to kind of settle down in their married life. They loved each other. They had a beautiful daughter. They were building their dream home. Everything was going perfectly. And her husband um, was killed. He died of stab wounds that the coroner ruled as accidental. Oh, excuse me? Right. (laughs) 
I couldn't find any information out there on her husband that died of the accidental stab wounds, but can we talk about that for a minute? Yes. How do you die of accidental stab wounds? I don't know what an accidental stab wound is. Like, like oh my God, oh, I tripped so into your knife. I stabbed you. It was an I'm accident. So sorry about oh, that. Oh wait, I stabbed you again. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Oh gosh, there goes another one. I just, I don't. Ha it's such an accident. Right. I or like, oh, what's that in my back? Oh, you accidentally threw your knife at me. Oh, accidentally. Sorry, sugar. Right. I'll get that. How does that happen? Oh, well, well, I did it again. I'm yeah. so sorry. I, I would really be interested to talk to somebody. Who knows more information about an accidental, accidental stabbing? I, I would like to know who that is, who even knows anything about that. Right. Like, I, I stabbed him, but I didn't mean to stab him. But how do you not mean to stab somebody? Or I stabbed him, but I meant to stab somebody else. I got it. Here it is. Okay. It's when you're a close talker. <laughs> Yes, I hate the people that invade like your personal the, yeah. space. And so you, and you're sitting around and you just happen to have like a knife in your hand. Right. And the, the, the close talker comes up to you. Right. And you're like, whoops, you're too close. I accidentally stabbed you. <laughs> that is, that is brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. That's what it is. And right, I, right. And so, and I stabbed you dead. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> this poor Sarah, she's lost her, she's lost her husband. And her marbles. <laughs> well, no, she didn't stab him. Wait. She didn't stab him. Who stabbed him? It was a work accident. Oh, he, somebody accidentally stabbed him at work? Yeah, he worked in construction. Yeah. And he was accidentally stabbed on the job. It had to have been a close talker. I had to have been. <laughs> I, I accidentally saw you in half. <laughs> stabbed yeah, you. I'm accident. really sorry. Gosh. It was an accident. Sorry about that blood loss. Yeah. <laughs> You're good though, right? Yeah, let's just keep working. <laughs> yeah, let's keep working. All right, we need to get back and focus oh, on Sarah because she was sorry, very, sorry. she was devastated. And this is devastating. It is, and she's got a young, but the circumstance is a little odd. Um, she has a young daughter, and she is devastated. Um, so, in 2010, and that was in 2007. So, she married her first husband in the 90s. Then she remarried the love of her life. 2007, he passes away. And in 2010, a friend um, convinces Sarah to go out on a blind date. And she hadn't dated since her husband died. Accidents so, to yeah. So the person that they said you need to go on this blind date with, his name, he was a local jeweler, had his oh. owned his own jewelry store, it was a family owned business and his name was Michael Colucci. Oh. Um he was a divorcee and he had a daughter about the same age as Sarah's daughter. For Sarah it was love at first sight. Aw, good you know, for Sarah. The the big romance connection. You go on that date and you're like, okay. This is it. I got it. Mm -hmm. This is it. This is the one. And she even after the date called her mama and said, Mama, I'm a, I'm gonna marry this man. Oh. Not because he had proposed, but because she really felt like he was the one. So um, they did. They fell in love. They really did fall in love, and they had a fairy tale wedding in 2011. And you know, in this area, they do those weddings up, oh, right, Charleston? My gosh. Woo! You got a good wedding. Um, and then Sarah started working at the family-owned jewelry store. <clears throat> well, that's probably where her engagement ring came from, anyway. Oh, God, I can only imagine how big that ring was, right? Yeah. Woo, I bet it was amazing. Not a bad profession to marry into. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. Um, so she started working at the jewelry store, and she told her friends that she loved going to work and being with her husband every day. And there was a lot of flexibility. She was allowed to take her um, her daughters to work, his his daughter and and her daughter. Um, and she felt blessed. Um, and the Colucci Jewelers was started by Michael Colucci's stepdad. And his name was Ivo. Um, and to strangers, it appeared as if it was a fairy tale life. Nice. But people that were really close to Sarah could see things were kind of falling apart. Oh, no. Sarah's friends noticed that she was loyal to Michael to a fault. Um that if somebody said they didn't believe what he said or they made a negative comment about him, Sarah quickly removed that person from her life. Mm -hmm. So she started to not hang out with her friends as much, and um, 
she kind of got involved in in a lifestyle that was had a lot of drinking and partying and oh. maybe not the healthiest but um, she also they also her friends also noticed that Michael had a very short fuse when it came to Sarah uh-huh. and that their arguments were very heated and sometimes scary um, some friends said that the relationship became codependent and unhealthy very quickly um, there were some financial there was talk of some financial troubles in the ho- in the household um, and maybe even that the jewelry business wasn't as lucrative as it had once been um, and there were also some rumors that Michael and Sarah dabbled in drugs. Oh, drugs so, will get you. That's right. They'll get you, girl. They'll get you every time. So Sarah was in trouble. The marriage was bad, and her family felt like Sarah's drinking warranted some professional help. Oh, my. So they encouraged her to go to rehab, but she wouldn't go. Um, and this this lasted for a while. This was, let's see, they got married... And 2011, by 2015, things were not, things were not good. Mm. Um, on Wednesday, May 20th of 2015, Sarah called her mom, and she was furious. She said, Mama, it's drugs. <gasps> um, she said that um, Michael was really, really using drugs, and it was causing their marriage to come undone, and she'd had enough. Her plan was... <laughs> that she was going to chaperone her daughter's field trip, which was the next day on the 21st. And okay. then um, on the 22nd, her daughter had a fifth grade graduation, and that would have been on a Friday. And then on Saturday, she was going to take her daughter, and she was going to leave her husband. Wow. That was her plan. She had had it. Done, done, and done. Okay. But you know how it gets in May. You've got kids in school. It's oh, crazy busy. Crazy. You've yeah. got field trips. You've got graduations. You've got Ceremony, parties, ceremonies. Right. Picnickers. So she, <laughs> also known as picnics. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who don't speak Karen, that would be picnic. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. Picnics so Go this, ahead. she called her mama on the on the 20th and a few hours later Sarah was dead oh my right a little after 7 p.m. on May the 20th a 911 call came into dispatchers a distraught Michael Colucci told them that his wife was dead that she had committed suicide by hanging oh gosh right now let's think she had just called her mama hours earlier and said listen I'm not happy he's into drugs I got to get through the rest of this week and then I'm out. Okay. She never said, Mom, I can't do it. Mom, it's, you know, it's the end. Yeah, because you don't talk about a field trip. And a graduation. And a graduation. Right. If you're planning on, if your plan is to kill yourself. Right. Not typically. I don't know. I don't, I don't really know. Right. So, according to Michael, he and Sarah had been driving along when Sarah said that she needed to use the bathroom. So, they stopped at a warehouse in Somerville that the family owned and did business out of. Okay. So they were familiar with the so with the warehouse. A random pop. It spot. wasn't random, no. <laughs> 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 so they pull up to the warehouse, Sarah gets out of the vehicle and goes inside to the bathroom. Michael says that he waited thirty minutes and Sarah never came back, so he became concerned and went to check on her. Well maybe she had to go number two. Well for thirty minutes? I mean, I'm just saying, sometimes I like to just get some peace and quiet and sit in there for a minute or two extra. <laughs> okay. that, that's just me, I'm sure. <laughs> I mean, after 10 minutes, I'd have been honking the horn. Well, that's true. Okay, let's go. I know, I know. So anyway, Michael goes. He tells the um, the dispatchers that as he approached the warehouse, he could see Sarah hanging from a rafter by a garden hose. She oh, had gosh. gotten a garden hose gotten it over the rafter in the warehouse, tied it around her neck, and hung herself in 30 minutes. A garden hose? A garden hose. Right. He says that he got her down, but she was already dead. Oh. When the EMTs arrived... Something don't smell right. (laughs) They found Sarah lying on a concrete slab, 
A strand of her hair was found on the hose where it was looped around the fence. So there was a fence, a little walkway, and that's where the garden hose was, and then the building. But and there was a strand of hair? A strand of hair, right, wrapped around the hose. And the hose? That was connected to the fence. I mean, that's a weird place for a hair to wrap itself around. It does seem odd, right? Like, that's a weird thing. One end of the hose was under her body. Her face was blue and her body was cold. Um, Sorry. After That's okay. After this scene, um, they take, you know, she's pronounced dead. They take her body away. And Michael moves in with Sarah's parents because he's so distraught. Um, interestingly enough, though, Michael never held a funeral for Sarah. What? Right. And he waited six months to pick her ashes up. Oh, my God. Right. Something is not okay. <laughs> exactly. And and her parents were like, Michael, we need to have a funeral yeah, for her. We need her to, children? Right. We need to do... And he and he just never... He never did it. He never got around to never it? Never got around to it. Oh, my right. God. And then Sarah's mom said, listen... You keep changing your story. Um, Michael said that he had waited. He told the EMTs that he had waited 30 minutes and then went to check on her. Um, then he told somebody else that he listened to two songs on the radio and went to check on her. So his story kind of changed a little bit. And the parents got pissed really quick about that and said tell. there's some red flags here it doesn't make any sense that our daughter would commit suicide she had these plans and we smell skunk i can't get past the fact that that some woman supposedly walks into a warehouse to go tinkle finds a garden hose loops it over the rafter and hangs herself i that's i mean that's just so it seems so random like i don't I don't know. I mean, I've never been in that mindset, but I can tell you that it seems strange to for me to think we're out for a Sunday drive and I got to pee and I'm going to go in this warehouse and oh, what a great opportunity to let me just hang myself right with a garden hose. Right. I, I didn't even realize you could hang yourself with a garden hose. I know. It, it seems like it's not it would the be, stretchy kind. It would be really. It seems like it would be really difficult to. Yeah, and then I still keep going back to that random hair wrapped around the hose the wrong end of the, the hose it would it, like you I'm would think so if confused. she had hung herself it would be on the piece that was under that her was, body or yeah that was, that was actually where she was hanging from right that i could get but this this is very right. that's not right it's suspect it's very not right right so according to authorities um sarah had some grooves around her neck okay um her knees and one of her feet were scraped they noticed that Michael had a bloody and swollen lip, and he had scrapes on his knuckles, wrist, and arm. His car was parked 20 feet away with an unobstructed view of the fence where they found the garden hose. Oh, so he could have, he would have seen her. Right. He like, would have seen her get the hose. I, I thought you were just peeing. I didn't know we were watering plants. Right. Right. And some versions of his story, Michael said that he waited through two songs on the radio before he checked on Sarah Those and found her must hanging. Have been rough because they gave him a bloody nose, right? Or a bloody lip or something. And another version, he said he stayed in the car for thirty minutes, and at one point he told Sarah's mother that Sarah had um, shimmied between the fence and the building, and that she had tripped and fallen into the hose. And it hung her? Right. Right. So there was a gate. And in order to get into... What about the rafter thing? Right. Well, he changed his story. Oh, my gosh. He told his mother a different story. I think... I don't know what happened. I think she, you know, maybe she tripped tripped and and fell into that hose. And it wrapped around her. Right. And hung her. Right. Because I'm sure the parents were like, Michael, tell us again. Yeah. Because you want to know. Like, how how did this happen? What happened? You were there. Um. When the medical examiner's report came back, it said that Sarah died from asphyxia by neck compression, um, but they could not determine if it was intentional. Medical evidence showed that Sarah was not strangled by a garden hose. Investigators reported that 
there was evidence of a struggle at the scene and um, she did have cocaine and Xanax in her system. <gasps> what? Right. But the invest the medical examiner is saying it wasn't a garden hose. Oh, he's saying that's it not wasn't, a strangled her. Right. That's what he's saying. Okay. So a year almost a year after Sarah's death, Michael was finally charged with her murder. Wow. Prosecutors say that Michael strangled Sarah with his bare hands and staged the scene to make it look like a suicide. Um, a they didn't do a good job because yeah. that, that's the most far-fetched suicide story I've ever heard. It is a little shady. Yeah, like it, the garden hose. Come on, dude. You could have picked something. I mean, this is yeah a little. I mean, different, a, a, a garden hose. Right. No. Well, no. you know they have those garden hoses that that. Um, they grow kind of yeah, like, kind of like a penis. <laughs> <laughs> the water gets in, it fills up, and then yeah. it gets bigger. It gets bigger, right. and then when you turn it off, it's shrinks. So they're I not. They, I, I guess don't think you it's could. That one. You you could, I guess. I, um, potentially, I, I don't know. It, it's very, it's very, very odd story. It's odd, it, and it's not for me to to judge. I don't. I wasn't no. there. I don't know. It's I'm for just the judge to judge. Judge to judge. That's right. <laughs> and the jurors. Here, here, come here come the judge. Here come the judge. All right, so jurors were taken to the warehouse, and they were shown the crime, where the crime took place. Um, after all of the evidence and witness statements, um, everything was given to the jury, and the judge handed it off to the, to the jurors and said, there you go. May the force be with you. Go figure it out. Right. Um, the jurors could all agree unanimously that Michael was not guilty of murder. What? Right. But they were split on whether or not he was guilty of manslaughter. I accidentally wrapped my hands around her? <laughs> well, maybe I didn't intend to kill her. Okay. Is that what manslaughter is? I can't remember. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I would need to know. There was no need... intent. It just happened what? in the heat of passion. That... I don't think that's what that is. I don't know. I, I'm not a lawyer. Manslaughter. And I do I not play one on it TV. Was a, it was just an accident. Oh, okay. And, and somebody died. There you go. Well, um, the judge declared a mistrial, and that was December of 2018. Oh, my. And Michael Colucci walked away as a free man. Is he still free today? He is. He lives on Folly Beach. <gasps> but no, sorry, Edisto. He's in Edisto. <gasps> we go there. I know. We better not take a garden hose with us. Exactly. Oh. Yeah. Um, Sarah's family is, it, and and the defense attorney has said, not the defense attorney, mm -hmm. the prosecutor, the state prosecutor has said that they will go back to trial. Yeah. It it, it will happen. Um, but it has not happened yet. Interesting story that happened kind of in the middle of this whole drama with the trial and stuff is that Michael's stepfather, Ivo, remember the one that started yeah. the jewelry store? He um, shot his wife, Michael's mother, shot her at work in the jewelry store. Oh my gosh, it's like it's like murder runs in their family. I know. It's crazy. So he shot her? Did he go to jail for that? He has not gone to trial yet um, because some people are saying he has dementia. But the whole thing is caught on the security cameras in the in the jewelry store. Oh, no. So, and when police got there, he walked out and said, I killed her. She's in the back. Um, my gun's on the table. So he confessed. She tried on too many rings. I'm telling you. <laughs> I don't know. She said, I like this one. I'm going, I'm just, keep, I'm keeping this ring. And he said, no, put it back in the case. It sounds like a cursed business to me. I don't I think don't, I would have I'm not applying to... for a summer job there. No. Well, that store is since closed. <laughs> oh, that's why. I'm not applying. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, Sarah's family is raising her daughter. Mm -hmm. um, in April of 2017, that's when Ivo shot and killed Michael's mother in the same jewelry store where Michael and Sarah spent so many days. Wow. Um, Sarah's father has filed a civil lawsuit against Michael on behalf of Sarah's daughter. Good. So Sarah's um, daughter is old enough now to kind of talk about just after the murder when Michael moved out of uh, Sarah's parents' house, he took the, her daughter with him. Well, yeah. And moved in so. with Ivo, the crazy, mm. and Michael's mother. Mm. 
Um, and the daughter says that there was abuse in that house and that some neglect had happened. Abuse from who? From the stepfather and Michael. Against her? Yes. And they were abusive towards her? Yes. Okay. Um, and so her grandfather has filed a civil suit on her behalf because uh-huh. she's not, at the time he filed the suit, she was not a legal age to file it, to file it um, for wow. some money to come to her. Yeah. Um, yeah, I wonder if there was like a life insurance policy. I don't know. So. I don't, I don't know. But I mean, she was married to Michael. Yeah. And he's not been found guilty of murder. So I would assume if there wasn't a life insurance policy, he would have gotten it. That's true. Um, wow. That poor kid. Yeah. Ugh. So that was the, the life of Sarah Colucci. That was a, that was tough. It's it one was of those local whodunits. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, wow. I mean, I don't know. Having looked at all of the information, I guess I could see why, a jury would be split on that decision of manslaughter because you really can't put your personal feelings in Mm -hmm. to it. You know, you've got to really be by the book Mm -hmm. and there wasn't any hardcore evidence that, that said this is what happened. You know, only Michael knows he's the only one there. So we'll see what happens. If we get an update or we find out there's a new trial set, we will follow it closely and we will update everybody on it. about it it because that's what we do. Exactly. How's that Christmas crack coming? Because my kitchen smells heavenly. Yay. All right. So I I poured the butter and brown sugar over the crackers. They went into a 400 degree oven for about five minutes, pulled it out. And then I took um, my chocolate chips. And I actually, this time, I mixed milk chocolate chips and butterscotch together. Wow. Because I love butterscotch. I thought I saw butterscotch. Any way that I can work it into anything, I put it in there. I, over that hot stuff that I just brought out, I sprinkled those evenly, gave it about three minutes for them to get nice and hot, and Mm -hmm. then I took a knife and spread them. I can see it's all melty and pretty. Yeah, so I spread them all out, and then I covered it with chopped pecans. Now... You can cover it with a lot of different things. If you're a lover of chocolate, like an overachiever with chocolate, you can put more chocolate chips down. I've seen it at, at Christmas time. People can, they wait for it to cool just a little bit. So it's just a little tacky. Right. And then they put green and red M&Ms on it. You can put almonds on it, whatever. I just happen to love some pecans. Mm. So I put that in there. Pecans now. Are, I would do like a toffee bar, like a, like a, a heath bar, bar crunch, you know, mm-hmm. like all blend it together mm-hmm. and put that over top. Yeah, there's just so many different ways to do that. So then I put that pan in your freezer. And now, and it doesn't say to do that. I'm just trying to see if I can get it cool enough for us to taste it. Right. But you just, normally, you would just leave it on the counter and let it cool, completely cool. No matter how many hours it takes. Cool it. <laughs> and then you take a knife or a spatula and then you just crack it up. And it comes, you know, it just comes out in like, all different size pieces. Right. And I like to take the crumbs and keep them in a container in the freezer for when you have ice cream. <gasps> and then it makes a really good oh, thing. Oh, yum. Let's do that. Ice cream. <laughs> well, let's do that. So, um, but, and then the big, the big chunks of it I take. Look at that. You could give your friends all the big chunks of it and save the crumbs for your sister. There you go. Yes. Well, I will tell you this, that a couple weeks ago, now, the week after Thanksgiving, I had a colonoscopy scheduled, uh-huh. <laughs> and I actually took two containers of Christmas crack into my doctor that was doing the colonoscopy. And did you have that right up the street, less than two miles from my house? No, actually, that's in West Ashley that oh. I had that, so, ha-ha. Uh-huh. Good for you. Anyway. You were about to be in big so trouble. So, I took that, and then the whole time I was there, nurses kept coming up to me and saying, are you the Christmas crack lady? <laughs> so, the... The last thing I remember before I got put under was my doctor coming in, shaking my hand, and saying, "You don't play with that Christmas crack." <laughs> He's like, "You came, you came. What did he say? Loaded for bear." <laughs> he said, "I gotta tell you, I'm so thankful you gave me two containers because I'm sharing one container and it's almost gone." Oh wow! Yeah, so it was lots of people. So I, I actually wrote down for a couple of the nurses that the real name of it because it said, I don't know what's going to come up if you actually Google Christmas, Christmas crack. crack. <laughs> so I didn't want them to think that I had drugged them. 
So anyway, it, it really worked out well. And, you know. All right. Well, enough talk. Let me have right, some. Let's, let's have, Give I'm me just some. Gonna get a little piece Give me. It's really chewy. It's not. It's not crisp right now. And now you've got another pan in the oven of this, right? Yeah. I I like to do two. I mean, one just is never enough. No. So anyway, all right, sugar. Here you go. It's warm and it's gooey and it's probably not. It's oh chewy. It's going to get up in your teeth. Oh my god, I love it. Oh, so good. All right. Well, you all be sweet and. Well, are you going to do a murder? Oh my god. You think just I didn't because do you need a murder? <laughs> Just because you made one pan Wait, of Christmas crack, that's it? I'm off. I'm done for the day. <laughs> what is happening? I don't know. Not okay, I'm either. coming over and doing my murder. Well, yeah, you got to do a murder. I got a murder girl. One pan of Christmas crack and she's done. I know. This is a podcast. I'm exhausted. Get what on board, lady. You? What can I tell you? I'm what exhausted. What is the matter with you? Oh, my gosh. All right, I'm coming over. All right, I'll let you come over. And then I'm getting in the kitchen and taking over that crack. Yeah. You can take my crack over. <laughs> I'll take over that crack. So what kind of murder are you doing for us? So I'm doing a murder, but really what I'm doing is I'm going to talk about this girl who I think is a complete badass. I love a badass. Me too. So um, I like her because she's a survivor, and I really like to hear it when victims survive I'm in a spite. Survivor. What was that exactly. song? Exactly. That's the only part I remember. I'm a survivor. Don't. No, don't. No. Don't. Leave it. Na, 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 na. No, don't do that. <laughs> na, 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 na. Don't. Don't I'm do the head bob. No, you look like a turtle. Don't do that. <laughs> is it a head bob or is it a full-on trunk bob? Like my upper trunk is just going back and forth like that birder. That birder. Bur <laughs> that bird. <laughs> that bird that dips its beak in the water. Right, right. That's kind of me. Right, I do the whole yes. body Bob. Dance. All right. Enough of me. So I'm going to talk about this girl, Holly Dunn. Okay. Holly Dunn. She, badass. She's a badass, and I love her. So she was 20 years old and a junior in college um, when this event happened. Okay. Okay. In late August at the University of Kentucky, it was around the second night of classes, so, you know, People are, things are just getting heated up, and Holly and her boyfriend, Chris, were at a party on campus. I mean, yeah, you may not have your books yet, but you found a party. Duh, you get there three days early to party before you even find your books. Hello. Yeah, that's the whole point of college and learning. <laughs> so, um, Chris and Holly go to a campus party, and then they decide that they want some alone time. They pack up some beers into Chris's backpack. Some beers? I like beers. <laughs> I like some beers. <laughs> Hello, beers. Not to be confused with the bears. The bears. <laughs> just the beers. Please. We're just going to have some beers. And so they go down to these railroad tracks behind this apartment house to enjoy some alone time and some beers. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> so after sitting oh and talking and leisurely drinking their beers, they decide to take a long walk back and head back to campus. Well, perfectly safe thing to do, by the way. Well, I mean, it's do a we college not teach campus. Our children anything? No, when you go to college, you don't think of any of that. Don't you... go walk by the railroad tracks and drink beers. But the railroad tracks are in the college town. And here's the thing: railroad tracks not in a college town. Danger. In a college town, no danger. Really? I mean, I'm just saying, you get there and you feel like you're in this little fishbowl Is this what life. you told your daughter when she went to college? I said, don't go to a college that has railroad tracks. <laughs> I specifically <laughs> said, no railroad tracks at your college. And I don't, she did. And she found she, there were no railroad tracks. Know. That's no, right. Just the parties. Huge parties. <laughs> one of the biggest party colleges on the East Coast. But that's neither here nor there. So they start to walk back, and they find that they were not alone. Of course not, because it's nighttime <laughs> by the rubber tracks. Listen, they needed a quiet place to enjoy their beers. I understand. Okay? All right. So um, suddenly. I think they were canoodling. Don't say canoodle. I'll say canoodle. What are you, 85? I might be. Jeez. 
Plus noodle. That makes me think of pasta and now I'm hungry. Thanks a bunch. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay, so a stranger appeared from around the side of one of those big electrical boxes by the railroad tracks. Okay. The perfectly safe railroad tracks. Right. <laughs> he asked them for money and Holly and Chris told them we're poor college students. We have no money. Have one of our beers. Here's a beer. So the stranger was suddenly holding a sharp metal object against Chris's neck. Oh, gosh. Yeah. So he had pulled something out as a weapon, and he told Chris to get on all fours. Oh. That's awkward to me. That's not okay. So the man started rifling through Chris's backpack and then used the backpack to tie Chris's hands together. Okay. He then took Holly's hands and tied them behind her back with, she thinks, a shirt. He dragged Chris off the tracks. Now, we used to live near some railroad tracks we when did. we were growing up. And typically, railroad tracks are a little bit raised up, like on that gravel mound. Right. Yeah. So he pulls Chris down that gravel mound and pulls him into some bushes. Right. That's bad. Yeah. And um, soon, he came back for Holly. She didn't run. And he... Well, she was probably thinking, I'm not going to run and leave my boyfriend. Yeah, like, what is this? And maybe right. he just wants some money and he'll leave us right. alone. So he had he had a ripped up shirt and he tied her hands. And then he, um, he dragged Chris off the tracks. And then he came back and the attacker used part of that ripped up um, T-shirt to gag both of the victims. As he was trying to tie the gag around Holly, she stuck her tongue out when he was trying to gag her. So it ended up that her gag fell off because she created oh. enough space that he thought he tied it tight, but it mm. wasn't. She's a smart girl. Smart girl. Yeah. So um, as the attacker ran back and forth from them to the shrubs and and he was like acting like he was looking for something or whatever. So Holly was able to get her hands loose and ungag Chris. And Chris told Holly, if you get the chance, just run. Oh. Now, she was also bound at her ankles, so she really couldn't run. Right, right. But he kept saying, dark. just, it's, it's, dark. it's dark. Yes. And she, he kept saying, just, just leave me and go get help if you get the chance. Um, he could not escape any of his bindings, just the gag. So soon the attacker came back down the tracks, back up from the tracks he came down into the bushes where they were and he had a huge rock in his hands oh. he walked straight over to chris and just dropped this huge rock <gasps> on his head oh god so that triggers holly into survivor mode right the attacker begins to rape her oh my god so she kicked and screamed and fought back as hard as she could and then the attacker held his sharp metal weapon against her neck and told her he could easily kill her he then stabbed her in the neck. <gasps> she stayed calm. She tried to talk to him, um, tried to humanize herself in his eyes. She told him she has a family that wants to see her again, asked if he had a family. She said, just let me go and I'll let you get away. I won't do anything if you'll just let me go. Um, he gets pissed off at her and begins to beat her. Oh, God. So she was on her, she ended up on her back and he was hitting her in the face. Right. And so she flipped over on her stomach to protect her face. Um, and he began beating her in the back of the head oh. and stomping her. She said she felt about five major blows on her back and head before she blacked out. Wow. So her breathing was very shallow and she wasn't moving and he thought she was dead and he stopped beating her and he ended up eventually he just left. Wow. So she awoke to still darkness and she laid there for a long time and listened to see if the attacker was anywhere in the area. She was so scared and eventually she felt like she had to get up and run. Right. So she pulled herself up and tried to walk along the rocks of the tracks and she knew that she was hurt because she could feel the blood um, dripping down her face and, and down her back. And her jaw didn't seem like it would shut properly, but she kept going. She was in agonizing pain and could barely walk. Right. And so about this time, this Chad Goats person, um, he's a university senior, and he turns out to be Holly's angel. He happened to be pulling a late-night late study session 
around one or two o'clock in the morning in his apartment and he happened to look up at one point out into the backyard and when he glanced out there he saw the figure of a girl and she looked like she was stumbling and so he went out to see her and noticed that she was covered in blood and he knew can i have to imagine? help her can you just stop for a second and think you're studying for exams you're hey or you're you're studying out doing whatever and you think you see some sorority girl stumbling drunk through your yard. And that's my thing, is that, you know, the, the parties that go on at these right. campuses, it would not be unusual to see some drunk person, right. girl, boy, whatever, stumbling through the yards of a, an apartment complex. Right. So, But sure. something ju about her just caught his eye, and he thought, I need to go check on this girl. Right. And so when he got there, she was just covered in blood. And he said her face looked like she had been in a boxing match. Ugh. So he, it really freaked him out, and he literally scooped her up, took him inside, wrapped her in a blanket, put her on the couch, and called paramedics, called 911. And he kept talking to her because he knew that she was probably in shock and he didn't want her to pass out. So um, he said I, he thought she would die any moment on his couch. So Holly just kept saying, I have a friend who's still out there. Please don't forget about my friend. And so the paramedics came and they transported Holly to the local hospital. And all the way there, the only thing Holly kept saying was, please don't forget about Chris. He's still out there on the tracks. Right. And so um, the paramedics let the police know that there's a second victim somewhere. Right. And um, Thank God. Well, it turns out Chris wasn't so lucky. Oh, no. When paramedics and, and the police arrived, he was pronounced dead at the scene. Oh, man. Um, Holly didn't know, and they didn't tell her. She yeah, suffered. That. She was just beaten to a pulp. She had multiple lacerations and bruises on her face and head. She had a broken eye socket, <gasps> a broken jaw, and her face had been beaten so badly it was distorted. Oh, no. She ended up um, with staples in her head because the lacerations were so deep. They right. had to staple it together. And some places had been shaved, and other places they just stapled the hair right into the wound like oh, they God. it was just such a mess and they knew she was gonna have to be cleaned up later but they were just trying to stop the bleeding right and the, and so it was it was a horrible mess um so eventually her family gets to her and um when her dad comes in she says dad chris is dead right and so he said, yes, he confirmed it. So now she's not only trying to recover from the trauma of this horrible rape and beating, and now she is having to recover from the emotional torment that her boyfriend died out there. Oh, my God. And bless her heart, it's her freshman year of college. It's just, it's so it's tragic. Awful. And we're just getting started. Oh, no. Like, we're, and we're just like, but the, the school year hadn't even really started. Right, right. Two days into the into class right i mean some people probably hadn't even made it to class yet right. <laughs> Ooh, i mean i'm not speaking from experience right but of just what not. i heard <laughs> so um so once the detectives arrive at the hospital holly was determined to give them every detail she could remember and the first thing she recalled is that the attacker had a mexican accent oh she also remembered he had wavy black hair. She could give an approximate height and body type, and she said he was wearing glasses. So that is amazing, considering all the damage done to her head, that she could recall that. She's a badass. She is a badass. She's a badass, because remember, she purposefully flipped onto her stomach to protect her face. Right. So there was some of this beating going on, where, and when she blacked out, she wasn't looking at his face. Right. So. She really had to remember it. I bless her heart for just having the the mindset to think I'm going to I'm going to memorize every detail of your face. Right. So um they did a rape kit and they were able to uncover a DNA su sample of the suspect. Okay. But they had no matches right now. So there were many calls that were came in with tips who thought they had seen the suspect and the police continued to search for Holly's attacker. 14 months passed with no leads. Oh, wow. 
Then in December of 98, a female doctor was raped and murdered and had similar injuries to what Holly had. She was 90 miles away in Houston. Mm, it's really tearing me up. So I've got to eat some crack. Uh, uh, <laughs> keep going. Keep going. Okay. She ain't eating my crack. Oh, wait. That is not what I meant. Oh. She, that is so... We're sisters, That's by nasty. God. Good no. Lord. No. I don't you? even know. Uh, just eat the damn... Eat it. Just eat. Not... Bad. No, don't just eat. stop. Okay, Keep I'm going to go back to... I got to go back. <laughs> okay, oh so in Houston, there was an attack on a, a female doctor. Uh -huh. And she had similar wounds and injuries to what Holly had. So, and then, um, outside of Houston, a pastor and his wife were bludgeoned to death with a, with a sledgehammer. Oh, my God. Yes. And the evidence found at that scene was tied back to the female doctor from Houston. And there was evidence from the female doctor's case that tied Holly. Oh, God. Holly's attack. So, so they're like, what's moving around. He's moving around. And they're like, what is happening? Like, right. this is crazy. So, crime investigators were able to connect all three murders together with a similarity. And that similarity was they all happened near railroad tracks. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So, so investigate. Huh? It's a hobo. Oh, my God. It is a hobo. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hobo. It's a hobo. It's Boxcar Willie. It is Boxcar Willie. Oh, my gosh. Oh, <laughs> Boxcar. Cut it out. <laughs> okay. So... As the investigators in Kentucky and in Texas began to collaborate, thank goodness, they realized they have a serial killer on their hands. Yeah. Because he's killed four people. Right. They can tie them all to similar types of death, and they're all by railroad tracks. So now they're like, oh, gosh, we've got a mess on our hands. So um, they figured yeah, out. because you don't know where, where you're going. Because yeah. trains go everywhere. Well, and is he is Where he, he headed? obviously he's using the 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 railroad track. I mean, he's using those tracks to cover ground. Right. So, um, actually, his killing grounds covered a hundred and fifty mile radius oh around gosh. Houston and other states. Wow. Yeah, as far up as Ohio. Oh. Yeah, and down to Texas, Kentucky's in there. I mean, it's crazy. This this man's traveling. So. Turns out that Holly had not only survived her horrific attack, but she is the sole survivor of a serial killer named Rafael Resendez Ramirez. Well, he certainly was Mexican. Yep. He became known as the Railroad Killer. Mm. At one point, the manhunt for him stretched from Ohio to the Mexican border. Wow. He landed himself on the FBI Most Wanted Fugitives list for a while. Mm. And as he was being hunted nationally, he continued to kill. <gasps> he killed two women in one day, 90 miles apart. Oh, my gosh. Yep. That is terrifying. And then he would show up in a different state the next day. That is terrifying. That is horrible. Railroad tracks, bad. 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 Yeah. I know that we, our country uses those to transport not just people but goods, but yeah. bad. Just bad. Yeah. Don't live near them. Don't walk near them. Don't no. go to college Stay near away. them. Stay away. Don't work near them. Don't look at them. Don't. No. So, um, he was using the railroad system to effortlessly cross the country back and forth. He was crisscrossing and killing. So, Holly became so terrified, terrified because he had not been caught. She, When she was healed enough to travel, she signed up. To go to school over in England. Good for her. Yeah, She's get like, me the hell out of this country. Of My God, with the damn railroad tracks. We found him already. Ugh. I'm out. So finally, a tip came in to the FBI from a relative of Ramirez. And based on that tip, they were able to track down his sister in New Mexico. Mm. So she became the liaison between the railroad killer, her brother, and law enforcement. And they just started to try to reel him in. So arrangements were eventually made for Ramirez to met, meet a Texas Ranger on the International Bridge in El Paso. Mm, you, don't, you don't want to mess with the Texas Ranger. You don't. And I, I, I don't want to mess with the border. No. So, yeah, there's lots of things <laughs> a lot right of stuff here. happening there right now. Yeah. And I don't know what happens in El Paso except for they make pretty good salsa. And they, every time you say El Paso, aren't you supposed to clap? 
I've never heard of that sugar. What are you drinking? Mm -hmm. Is it the Christmas crack? Has it gone to your brain? Maybe it's so <laughs> good. I've never heard of clapping for El Paso. No, no they make salsa <laughs> in the old part. Old El Paso in the old parts. Somebody will know what I'm talking about. No, okay, they won't. Like, They'll be like, nobody something. knows. It's your own mystery. Okay, so um, he finally surrendered yeah, without incident. Go on, take the money and run. Yeah, down to old El Paso. Did they say old El Paso? <laughs> like the salsa? <laughs> they, yeah, wasn't that Steve Miller? I don't have to look them lyrics up. Mm -hmm. Jeez. Go on, take the money and run. Cheese and crackers, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> 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 All right, back to my story. i got to cut out the crack. I'm serious. Okay, law enforcement later found that Ramirez was operating under several names, but he preferred to be known as Angel. Really? Angel of death? Just call me Angel of the Railroad, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Olay! I think you need to stay off the, off the, no more Christmas crack. I think I inhaled the, the Christmas crack fumes <laughs> from over oh. here. Anyway, um... At the time of the arrest, he had been linked to six murders in Texas, two in Illinois, and Chris's murder and Holly's attack in Kentucky. Mm. Um, of course, Holly Dunn was ready and waiting to testify against the Antichrist when it came to trial. Right. And she was his only survivor. Oh my God. So she was the star witness. So she came right back from Mary Old England and said, Tally ho, motherfucker. <laughs> I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. <laughs> so... <laughs> She was ready to put this man down. So she said in the court that his eyes were flat black and there was no humanity in his eyes, whatever. He pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity. Oh, sure. Yeah, exactly. I'm sane enough to cross the country on my own by some by jumping trains. Right. Yeah, but I am. I don't know what I did when I killed them people. Right. I was just eating some chips and old El Paso salsa and... Oh, Jesus, with the clapping. I don't know this. I don't know this part. I know what part you're saying, but I don't think they said Old El Paso. Yeah. Okay, we're going to have to, we're going we're gonna to do some research in a minute. Okay, so, um, let's see. At his first trial in Texas, because Texas said we get him first, they only charged him with the murder of the doctor. Her name was Dr. Claudia Benton. And he had raped, stabbed, and beaten her to death in her apartment near Baylor University. Oh, wow. After several hours, the jury rejected his plea and convicted him of capital murder. In the sentencing phase of the trial, it was Holly's turn to have her say. So she testified. And um, she testified last because the prosecuting attorney wanted her story to be the last thing that the jury saw and heard because she could give a firsthand account of what kind of a monster he was. Right. So, um, when she took the stand, she answered to questions and told her story of being attacked in the dark of the night with her boyfriend. She went through the attack and the loss of her boyfriend, how he was killed. And the whole time she talked, she kept her eyes focused on the prosecutor and her family who was in the background behind the prosecutor. Because imagine the strength it has to take. Oh, just to, to be in the be same there. building as this right, man, this right, monster. Right. So when it and came time for her. That oh, horrible time. The oh loss and the fear, the rape, the everything, just the whole situation to have to relive it and to have to stand up there knowing all eyes are on her right, right. now. And to have to say, this is what he did to me. Right. But she's brave and she's a badass. She's a badass. So um, it came time for her to answer, is your attacker in this room? And at that point, she looked him square in the eye and identified him. But he sat there smug and smirking. I just want to walk over and smack his head off. Yes. So, um, but the jury got the last word after all because they sentenced him to death good after being sent to death row in texas he was never tried for any of other crimes because texas puts them to death and you can only be put to death once so his his appeals finally gave out and he um is set to be put to death june 2006 so at that point knowing he would soon die the railroad killer confessed to all of his crimes 
He confessed to a total of 15 murders in Texas, Illinois, Florida, Kentucky, California, and Georgia oh my during word. the years of 1986 and 1999. Oh, my gosh. That is, that is so Yeah, 13, crazy. 13 years. And his victims ranged in age from 21 to 87, both male and female. All of them died from stabbing or beating. Ugh. So he was finally put to death by lethal injection June 27th, 2006, because Texas don't play. That's right. Express lane. Express lane. Yeah, we're going to help you. Out of here. So um, so Holly went on to, um, she actually wrote a book called Soul Survivor of her, her um, nightmare. Go. Yeah. And she also set up Holly's House, which is a child and adult advocacy center for victims of intimate violent nice. crimes. Okay, that's not yeah, it's that in, violent crimes are okay. No, but it's a, a nonprofit center in Evansville, Indiana. Wow. And she also has gone on, you know, the talk, the motivational speaking sure. talk circuit and stuff. So, I mean, we see all the time that from these horrible tragedies that happen where humanity just completely falls apart, that there there is a ray of sunshine that peeks through. And this ray of sunshine is, is Holly Dunn because had she not had the, the courage to survive that attack, find herself help, right. and give them that description, this man would have never been found. No. They were not linking these... Crimes together. Look how many different states. And it was not like he went in order, like, I'm going to start in Florida and then I'm going to go to Georgia. He was crisscrossing back and forth at right. will oh for 13 God. years. They had no idea. They didn't link any of the, these murders together. Years. So she didn't just survive. She put that asshole away. She did. And she, because of her, they were able to solve a lot of, a lot of murder cases that they didn't, they weren't going to be able to solve. Right, sure. So she's, she is a badass. I really have a lot of respect for Holly. Way to go, Holly. Yeah. So, and now you need to get your hands out of the damn Christmas crack. Because, All right, but I just want you to know before we leave. Oh, no. Here we go with the damn. Yes, they headed down to old El Paso. <gasps> they really did. And they clapped yeah, because when they got that's there. Yeah, they ran into a great big hassle. A big hassle. Yes. They were making salsa. No, Billy oh. Joe shot a man while robbing his castle. Oh, Billy Joe. Guess what? Bobby Sue took the money and run. No, that's oh. just at the El Paso Park. But I, I like Bobby Sue. What's her name? Billy Bobby Bob. Sue. Oh, <laughs> Billy Sob. What's her name? Billy Bob. Billy Bobby Sue. Sue. What's the matter with you? All right, people, we're gonna sign. We off gotta go Christmas because we're high off of Christmas, Christmas crack. crack. So y'all be sweet and stay safe and don't go near the railroad tracks. And have a great week. Yay. Bye. Thank you for listening to Believe. You can show support to your host by subscribing to the show and giving us a five-star rating on your preferred platform. Check us out at Believe.com and search for B-L-E-A-V on YouTube.